I have an answer for you. Thank you, Lord. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Appreciate all of you being here this morning. Thank you very, very much. I know we have a kind of a large stack of people that are out of town with the quizzing and the deaf ministry and all that and what vacations. But we're very thankful for you all being here today. And uh, I know we've already made mention that Megan's here. We're so happy she's back with us. Very glad for her being here. The Schaefers, I saw the Schaefers, and I know they mentioned you also. I saw Rocky. I'm so happy that Rocky's able to be with us today. And Sarah Eastman's back here somewhere. Sarah was here. I know she's here someplace. There she is. Praise God. Glad to have Sarah home with us. And uh, as, as it was mentioned, let's continue to pray for Mike Hawley. And also, uh, I got a call. Uh, Brother Montgomery's son-in-law, Jeremiah, is married to his daughter, Michelle, in Alaska. Jeremiah's dad passed away. And uh, I've talked to him, prayed for him. Just hold that family up in prayer, if you would. And uh, any kind of loss of any loved one is not an easy thing to take because we're just very endeared to them. Amen. Uh, I, I, uh, I got more than I have time to talk about. But uh, I, uh, I, I guess I want to read from... Romans chapter 7, if you'd be there. Dina, I saw you back there. So great to see you. Praise God. Romans chapter 7. And, uh, oh, where am I going to start here? Romans chapter 7. Maybe I'll start at verse 15. Romans seven fifteen. For that which I do... I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. I wish I could get a, an amen on that from somebody. That, that we pretty well fit into that scenario. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it's good. For then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Now watch this scripture. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Okay. For the good that I would do can't seem to do it and the dumb stuff and the evil stuff that I shouldn't do I find a real easy thing to do that now I want to go to one more scripture Jeremiah Jeremiah I know that's not something a lot of people read Jeremiah chapter 31 and I want to start reading verse 17 Jeremiah 31 17 well, I better read 16 so it makes sense. Thus saith the Lord, Refrain thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears, for thy work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. He is encouraging Jeremiah and the people there to understand that the captivity of the Jews that have gone into Babylon isn't forever. And they are going to come out of their imprisonment and they are going to come back to their land. Okay? Now watch this. And there is hope in thine end, saith the Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. That encourages me right now. That while he was talking about natural Israel returning physically to Israel, I think there's a spiritual precept there. 
that we can have hope that our children that have strayed away and gone a little, that they also will come home, that they will come home. Now watch. I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself. Thus, thou hast chastised me. This is what Ephraim saying. And I was chastised as a bullock unaccustomed to the yoke. Okay, so you get what he's saying. I put a yoke on, on him, but it chafed him because he resisted it and he refused it and he fought against it. He said, I was like one of these cattle, a steer, an oxen that you put a yoke on, but I didn't like the yoke. And so I resisted it and I refused it and I rebelled against it. Now, now, now watch this. This is so powerful. I was chastised as a bullock unaccustomed to the yoke. Turn thou me and I shall be turned. For thou art the Lord my God. Surely after that I was turned, I repented. And after that I was instructed. And I smote upon my thigh, and I was ashamed, yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. Okay, now you're going to have to really stay with me. I... I, I I, uh, I'm trying to think of a good title. Hold on. Sometimes my titles are better than my sermons. Okay. Human willing will birth divine turning. Human willing will birth divine turning. Lord, bless the preaching and help me to be a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. There are many, many scriptures, and I happen to, honestly, I'm not lying, I went to my Strong's ex Exhaust and Concordance in uh, India. I didn't mention you. Where are India? So glad to see you. Uh, and I, I didn't count them, but I'd say there's at least 50 to 75 scriptures in Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, and I read them all, that says, turn, turned, turning, turnest. And the majority of those scriptures all instruct us that we're responsible for turning. And it also tells us that we are responsible for turning away. We are responsible for turning our back to God. Okay? Now, this, this thing kind of leaped out at me when I got to reading this Jeremiah and comparing it with Romans chapter 7. Because uh, this is an interesting thing. This is uh, the only two scriptures that I've been able to find in the entire Bible where it talks about, and God turned. And that I turned because he turned me. Well, here we go. Turn to change direction or intention, to alter feelings, attitudes, or actions. To reverse one's course or present position. There are times, and I hope I'm not offensive right now, there are times that we need to be turned and we can't. It's not that we're rebellious. It's not that we don't want to. But like Paul of old, he said, when I would do good, I can't. When I know what's right, I do stupid stuff. Well, I got, I got hope for you this morning. When you can turn, he can turn you. And I don't know about you, but I am convinced this morning that I'm only here because different times in my life, God supernaturally, sovereignly, mercifully turned me when I couldn't turn. And Jeremiah just leaps off the page and he says, 
Turn thou me, and I shall be turned. He said, there was a time in my life when I rebelled and resisted and refused the yoke that you put on me. And it chafed me and it irritated me. And I just didn't have a good spirit. But he said, now I am willing for your yoke to come on me. <laughs> Woo! That, that, don't you get it? Every drug addict wants to turn from it. And sometimes with their best efforts, they can't. There's this insatiable addiction, and they just, they yield to it. But if you ask any drug addict who's been through some of the terrible things they go through, they want so desperately and deeply to turn, and they can't. And the drunkard wants to turn, and the gambler wants to turn, and the immoral wants to turn, and the liar and the dishonest person, and those who are abusers in their marriage or to other people, they really deep within them want to turn. I don't want to continue doing like I'm doing, but I can't. Now, now I want to show you a little something. I, 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 now, now let me just read this again. Said, what? Thou hast chastened me, verse 18. And I was chastened as a bullock accustomed to the yoke. Turn thou me, and I shall be turned. For thou art the Lord my God. Now, this is what I've I, it's just jumped out of me the next three words. Surely after that. I want to know do you have an after that? Do you have after a pouring out to your heart to God and saying, I tried to stop doing this. I tried to stop acting like that. I tried to stop feeling like that. I've given it my best shot and I can't do it. So I'll tell you what, I'm telling you right now, I'm willing to change. I'm willing to stop. Lord, turn thou me. When you make a statement like that, you invite Almighty God to do in your life what you have been unable to do for yourself. Woo! Would you turn to your neighbor, loved one, friend, and just turn around and say, I need God to turn me. And I need it done this morning. I tried to turn away from this lust. I tried to turn away from this anger. I tried to turn away from this frustration. I prayed. I fasted. I studied. I sought counsel. But for some reason, when I would do good, I don't do it. And when I don't want to do bad, I do it. There ain't but one thing left to do. I'm putting it in your hands, Lord. And I'm, woo, and I'm asking you, turn me because I can't turn myself. Woo! And I don't know why we would think that's so hard, being that he turned the rock into standing water, and he turned the rivers into dry land, and he turned the dry land into pools of water, and he turned the curse into a blessing. And the Bible says in 1 Samuel 10, about verse 5 or 6, it says, Samuel talks to De King, who's, King uh, Saul, who's going to be the next king, and he says, and you're going to meet these prophets coming down from the hill of the prophets. And he said, they're going to be with psaltery and psalm. They're going to be singing. And the Spirit of the Lord shall come upon thee, and thou shalt be turned into another man. Now, when I, I preached on that for years and read it, but it was like last night in prayer, it just leaped out at me. He said, son, do you realize that Saul wasn't seeking change? He wasn't seeking to turn. He wasn't praying. He wasn't fasting. He wasn't counseling. He said, I just sovereignly did it. Sometimes, as much as we try to do, we just need a sovereign interruption of God that comes on us and turns us. Would, would, would somebody be kind enough or rude enough, whatever you consider it is, would you yell at me real loud and say, turn me, Lord, turn me, Lord. and I shall be turned. And if you do it, hell can't stop it. And if you do it, my flesh can't stop it. And if you do it, my past can't stop it. And if you do it, my present can't stop me. 
I need you to turn me. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Stay, stay with me. Just stay with me just a few minutes. Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you'll be turned. You didn't ask to be turned. You weren't seeking to be turned. You were on some prayer vigil. You didn't know. You said, I'll just sovereignly come on and I'll turn you. So when I got to praying last night about that, I said, Lord, thank you for that sovereign turning that you did to Saul. And I felt the Spirit say, let me give you a warning. I said, okay, what's going on? He said, if you don't stay connected, the turning doesn't last. said, I supernaturally and sovereignly turned him into another man, but he would not pursue me. He would not worship me. He would not seek me. He would not pray unto me. And that original turning waned. I wonder how many of us in this service, God bless you, God has supernaturally turned you into the truth and turned you by his love and his mercy and his kindness, but possibly we have become disconnected over the so many days or years, and that turning is not helping us. We need to do like Jeremiah and say, I'm willing now for you to put your yoke back on me. I'm willing now for you to direct my life. I'm willing now for you to turn me. I don't mean to be offensive, and I hope I don't assail your great theological whatever of apostolicism, but I'm here to tell you, sometimes the truth of God ain't enough to turn you. Sometimes the love of God ain't enough to turn you. Sometimes the faithfulness of God ain't enough to turn you. Sometimes we just need to present ourselves to him and say, I tried and failed. I reached and didn't find. I tried my best to stop cursing, stop doing this, stop smoking, stop drinking, and I'm not able. Hey, God, will you just supernaturally turn me? And if you turn me, I will be turned. I, I, I know I'm a responsive kind of person, and please don't, don't, don't be offended at what I'm fixing to say. As, as much as I appreciate your hand clapping and your hallelujah and all that kind of stuff, I'm needing you and I to be honest and naked and open before God and look at where we are right now. Because the Bible said something miraculous happened after that. And I asked the Lord, I said, after what? He said, after he prayed that. Sometimes the greatest thing in your life and my life is that simple prayer, I can't turn. I admit I can't fix it. I don't want to hurt Pentecostal brains. We think if we have a shouting service, a running boogaloo in service, if we have tongues and interpretation, the preacher preaches like a house of fire, and the music department brings it on down, that that's going to fix us. No, there is sometimes that we just need a supernatural, sovereign turning of God, turning of our minds, turning of our outlooks, turning. If truth could save you, everybody in this building ought to be saved because I've been preaching the truth for 35 years. If the presence of God could save you and I and make us to become everything we need to be, everybody in this house would be conformed to Jesus Christ right now because we've been blessed by his presence. Sometimes after the truth, after the love, after the touch, after the presence, we still say, when I would do good, I do evil. When I wouldn't do evil, I end up doing good. Watch, he says, I know that it's available. I know what's right. Read what Paul, I read it to you from Paul. He said, but how to perform, I find not. That how doesn't mean he didn't know what to do. That how meant but I don't have the power to do it. You, you can sit down. A good church service ain't going to do it. Uh-oh. Let, let, let me read again. Yeah, watch. He said, I was accustomed to the, unaccustomed to the yoke. 
Lord, so I tell you what, turn thou me and I shall be turned, for thou art the Lord my God. And surely after that, watch. See, here's what the problem is. You can get sovereignly turned and then refuse to be instructed. You can be blessed of God and have an invasion of the Holy Ghost. Watch what he says. After that, after that, whew, my God, that's so powerful. After that, I was instructed. After that, I turned. After that, I was turned. I repented. So the turn is just the beginning. And after the turning, we're responsible to repent. He didn't repent to get turned. He confessed to get turned. And after God turned to me, he said, once you turned me, I repented. And once I repented, I became willing to be instructed. I uh, wish I had a witness here now. Mm -hmm. After that, I repented. Whew, wow. I repented. After that, I was instructed. This is, I think this is so cool. I've never heard anybody preach on it in my life. I'm sure they have and said wonderful. I just didn't hear it. And he said, and I smote myself on the thigh. I don't want to be rude right now or rated X, but I think some of you sweet Pentecostals that got super glue on your pants and your dresses, you ought to just sometimes when God does. Because according to the scripture, I have it recorded in Ezekiel. I think it's Ezekiel 18. Uh, 21, I think is what I wrote it down. He turned around. He was under guilt, and he was under shame, and he was humiliated for what he did. And he said, and in my sorrow and sadness, I smote my thigh. In Bible days, that was a sign of grief and sorrow and sadness and humiliation and overwhelming guilt. Now, you and I don't smite our thigh. We just said, boy, am I stupid. I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I felt that. I can't believe that I, I promised I would never do that again, and I'm right back in the same mud hole again. He said, I smote myself on the thigh, and I thought about how guilty I've been since my childhood, and I was ashamed, and I was embarrassed, but you turned me. Now, you understand, the turning of God is the beginning, not the ending. That's, that's one of the issues we have in the Pentecostal movement. If you and I get a touch from God, it's over. No, no. That's the opening of a new road. Once I was turned, I repented. Why? Because when you are turned by God, you see things better than you used to see. You understand things better than you used to understand. Wait a minute. And you're more willing to change than you used to be. I just wonder how much change is right here. You are pregnant with the possibility of change. And you, what you're needing is for God to supernaturally turn you. You ready for this? He won't turn you because you need turning. He'll turn you when you say, I'm sorry, I've tried, I can't fix it, I can't change. You turn me. Wow. Wow. My Lord, have mercy. I am willing. I'm willing. That's what Jeremiah said. I'm willing to be changed. What? But I'm powerless. Now I realize you can't say powerless to Pentecostals because they think they're God's gift to the universe. But I'm telling you what, every one of us have issues in our life when we are powerless. We are, we're willing. Could I get an amen? We're wanting. Can I get an amen? But we're not able. I wonder how many people in this auditorium, you sweet people besides me, have ever prayed and fasted and sought God and wept and stretched yourself for God to help you to change this, but you ain't changed. You ain't turned. There's no mystery and magic about turning into a godly person or turning into a spiritual person. See, it doesn't happen because there's some magic. It happens because there's some confession. We love the story of the prodigal son.
But do you understand that the prodigal son's problems was not really what turned him. It was the thought that God put in his mind that turned it. You and I better give God some thanks for times when God just <laughs> dropped a thought into our hearts and our minds. And we didn't do what we were intending to do. And we didn't say what we were intending to say. Now, I realize this is going over like a lead balloon. But I want to tell you, I am very encouraged by this. Because after 35 years of screaming my guts out to this audience, I'm free from being frustrated why you don't turn. If, if you can get any preaching better than me, I'd like to find out where it is. If you can get any music or singing any better than this church, I'd like to know where it is. If you can get a better move of the Holy Ghost than we've had in this church, I'd like to know where it is. So, so our turning isn't because we lack voice and we lack visitation and we lack music. The turning is some of us right now are just in desperate need for God to show up on the pew and turn around and turn us. And if he doesn't turn us, we're going to keep living frustrated Pentecostal lives. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going as fast as I can. This is so powerful to me. God, have mercy. I never seen anything like it. He said, don't you get what God is saying to this guy? He said, look, as soon as anybody sees the error of their way, and they're honest enough to say, you know, I've made a mess and I'm not doing good and I'm not living up to par, the par. Uh, I'm going to ask God to touch me. Watch. The minute anybody in this building right now becomes penitent, they bring God pleasure. The Bible says, is Ephraim yet my son? Is he a pleasant one unto me? You understand? We could be perverted. We could be messed up. We can be whacked out. We can have a terrible history, a bad record. But the minute we become penitent, God says, now that's pleasant to me. you got to get the story because the next two verses says, I'll tell you what, I don't care what kind of condition you've in. I don't care how many stupid things you've done. I've determined I'm going to show you mercy. I'm going to restore you. I'm going to save you. I'm going to bless you irregardless of what you have become. Now, for you sweet people who are waiting for me to get to the good part, I just passed. Now, yeah, it's, it's, it's so simple. All my life, I have asked God when I had habits, I had feelings, I had practices, Lord, take this from me. And it's like the Lord said, no, that's your job. You have to pursue and try to take it. But I never in my life, as God is my witness today, I have never asked God one time, turn me. I've asked God to enable me. I've asked God to empower me. I've asked God to give me his virtue and victory so I could have strength to defeat this. But it's so humiliating for a holy roller to turn around and say, I can't fix it. I've, I've fallen to the same mud hole again. I can't get rid of this anger. I can't get the victory over this lust. I can't get the victory over my dishonesty. Okay, Lord, watch what he said. Remember, the turning followed his confession and appeal. I'm willing to take your yoke. That's where some of you people are right now. You don't have a yoke. You believe in Jesus, but you don't have a yoke. live like you want, you do what you want, you come and go like you want, but you're not under the yoke. And, and, and we don't usually like the yoke because we're usually rebellious in heart, like Jeremiah was. He said, I chafed against the yoke. I, I, I resisted the yoke and it put big sores on my neck and back. And, and he said, I finally came to the place that, you know what? I'm tired of chafing and I'm tired of the sores and I'm tired of being frustrated. Okay, Lord, I'm willing to take your yoke. Turn thou me. I'm, I'm going to wait on you. I'm here. 
you, tell you, baby, if God doesn't supernaturally turn some of you sweet people, you're going to be in spiritual trouble. Because we get accustomed to living at a certain level of spirituality or worldliness or carnality. And because all hell hasn't broke loose and God hasn't killed our children, we think we are okay. I don't know about you, but I've had about all I can take of Jeff Arnold. I don't need him no more. I need some victory over some issues in my life. I need God to put his hand on me and turn me. Listen, his turning doesn't fix us. His turning enables us to make the right decisions so we repent and we receive instruction and we apply his truths to our life. But nothing's going to happen if he doesn't turn us. Now I confess to you, I thought this thing would have already exploded and I would be done. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, <laughs> this is so amazing. Whew. God have mercy. You understand that after he experienced conviction, he experienced contrition. After he experienced contrition, he expressed confession. That's how it works. All right, turn around, look at someone. I'll, I'll just, I'll try not to preach anymore. You, you just look at someone and say, have you been turned lately, or are you still the same old stupid person? Oh, is that too rude? Okay, let me, let me doctor it up for you a little bit. How long has it been since he supernaturally turned you? Never mind the sermon. Never mind the church service. Never mind what's going on. I'm asking you a question. Be honest. How long has it been since he supernaturally turned us? Because if he doesn't turn us, we don't really repent. If he doesn't turn us, we're not really willing to receive instruction. It blows my mind that we have people in this church that have repented but refuse instruction. I ask God to forgive me and then I tell the preacher, shut his stupid mouth and don't talk to me. Leave me alone. Don't bug me. Don't tell me what I can or can't do. Whoa. He said, I repented and received instruction. Why? Because the turning is initial. It is not final. Some of you wonderful people this morning, you're dealing with weaknesses in your life. You're dealing with habits in your life. You're dealing with practices that kind of buffet you and beat you up everywhere. I'm not saying you're not a wonderful, godly person. I'm just saying you've got issues in your life that are beating you up and are dominating you. And you, if you were honest enough, you would either stand up or wave your hand or whisper an amen and say, Yeah, I need for God to turn me. Because I've tried to turn, and I haven't been able to. I've tried to turn away from different things, and I, ah, I haven't been able to. I've tried to turn. I'm, I'm, I'm going as fast as I can. Paul said, when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I know what to do. And hey, watch. And I want to do what I know what is right to do. It's mind-boggling that this great apostle of the Gentiles would open his soul to the world and say, but how to perform it, I find not. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You got the Holy Ghost, yeah. You're baptized in Jesus' name, yeah. You've been blessed of God, yeah. You've been used of God, signs, wonders, miracles, yeah. You've, you've given birth to churches all over the world, yeah. What's your problem? Well, there's some things that have to be divinely turned. Because wanting to and even willing to ain't the same as turning. Some of you sweet people this morning, I'm assuming that you want to be more faithful than you are. Whether in attendance, whether in your finance, whether in your living lifestyle, you want to be, I wish I had a witness here. You want to be a more godly fella. You want to be a more Christ-like lady. 
but it ain't happening. You can come to church until you wear your shoes out. You can come to church until you wear the fur off your seat where you're sitting on that pew. You can come until you know so many sermons and any Bible scriptures, but you're still a loony. You still got issues in your life. You still got things. That's why some of you sweet people are lousy praisers. I can't force you to praise. I can't force you to worship. I can't even force some of you sweet people to smile. You act like you've got a mandate from God. I'm here to be sour. I'm here to be gloomy. I've got a calling from God. I'm going to ruin everything I sit next to. Give me a break. I don't want to ruin myself right now, but there's a half a dozen of you right now. I could call your name, and I'd like for God to turn you into a top. I'd like for God to just put you in a spin, and when you come out, you say, glory. Glory. And all of a sudden, you had a smile on your face and a praise on your lips and a joy in your heart. Hey, I need turning. I need God to turn me. I tried to turn myself, and I haven't been able to. I tried to turn myself away from certain propensities in my life, and I've not been able to. But there is a God right now that says, what you cannot do, I am able and I am willing to do it for you. Am I I preaching good yet? Oh, here, here. I want to kill my day right now. They're selling my tapes. The other side of broken, defeated by damaged desires and power encounters. Gave my life to give birth to these messages. They're so powerful, they're selling them 50 cents. Boy, does that make me feel special. We'll sell a whole box of your tapes for 50 cents. Nobody wants them. Well, they're only, they're only selling them because they're tapes and nobody plays tapes. And they're, you got, they have CDs now. I met a bunch of your friends in the St. Louis airport uh, yesterday and a whole bunch of your friends in in, uh, three and a half hours of laying over in Atlanta yesterday, last night. I met them. I knew they were your friends because when I looked to talk to them, they were doing this. I sat there and counted seven people in a row on this thing. I'm the only moron in in the airport of Atlanta that had a book. One guy had a screen, that thing must have been that big. He was watching a cowboy story. Had a, now, now Delta has put uh, uh, 110 sockets in all these different waiting places because everybody can plug in because I'm into the Antichrist. <laughs> and I watched them. I was there for three and a half hours. These people that I watched, I'd look up my book, they wouldn't dare say hello to anybody next to them. They didn't talk to their wives. They didn't talk to their husbands. They didn't talk to their kids. Why? Because their family's not reality. This is reality. And in my wonderful, gentle Jeffrey way, I just kind of gave a groan and said, Good God, what's happening around here? And they all went. I just got up and walked away. I, I said, I'm sorry. I'm a human. The race used to be on the planet. Got on the stupid plane. About 15 people I counted on the plane. Until they finally told them to put it away. I said, are you people afraid of the dark? Is there some, are, are you lonely? Does silence torment you? Have you ever thought about giving your eyes a rest? I know what you're saying. Well, you only say that, Brother Arnold, because you don't do that. There's a reason I don't do that. I didn't say it was sin. I just said I'm just not for it. 
And you laugh all you want to, but I, I took that as, as an omen from God. When I looked at all you people that had apple, there's a bite out of that apple. That ought to tell you something. If that thing would have had a full apple, I might have considered buying one. But that guy's signature is Eve was here. The spirit of Eve is here. I know some of you said, oh, Brother Arnold, you're just reading into that. Yeah, like I am your silence. Oh, Travis, I'm going to embarrass the fire out of you right now. You ready? Anything in your life you need God to turn you? Thank you. How about it, Ursula? Anything in your life that you sovereignly, supernaturally need God to just turn you? Doesn't mean you're an a, a immoral woman. Doesn't mean you're wicked or evil or so. But there's issues and practices and things in you. I wish I had some people in this church right now say, I got some things in my life I need God to turn. I can't turn myself around. I can't make myself to become. I need God to turn me. But I got news for you. He said, turn me, Lord, and I shall be turned. If you turn me, I'll repent. And if I repent, I'll receive instruction. And if I receive instruction, you'll save my children. You'll save my nation. You'll save my people. If I'll get turned around, there's triumph coming your way. I'm, I'm almost done. I'm not really done. I got four and a half pages of stuff, but I'm done as far as I can go. To will is present. I want to. But how to perform, I don't find it. I don't know how to do it. You actually believe that that 42 chapters of the book of Job is a story where Job turned himself around? That's crazy. The Lord showed up, chapter 39, chapter 40, and for the next two or three chapters, he went after Job with a knowledge that fried Job's mind. And he began to challenge Job with all these questions he couldn't answer. You know what God was doing? God was showing him, you can't turn yourself. But I can turn you. And you watch. When he infused that man with that information, he turned around and he said, I abhor myself. And I, I repent in sackcloth and ashes. I spoke about things that I didn't know. I, I said stuff. Please hear me. Don't, I'm not trying to be rude. Please hear me. Job was called a perfect man. Eschewed evil. He was the richest man in the east. But you have to understand something. Perfect didn't mean perfect like sinless. Perfect meant like complete, full. He was well-rounded. Wait a minute. And full of stupid stuff. Because when you read about 18 or 19 chapters of him talking, you can't hardly believe he's saying that. I cursed the day I was born. Why? Did God make a mistake? I hate the night they ever said a man-child was born. Are you stupid? I'm wanting God to challenge me and talk to me, and he won't talk to me. It makes me mad. What? This perfect man? Don't you get it? You don't know what you're capable of doing or saying until God puts you in the pressure cooker. There is stuff in my life and in your life that will not come to the surface until God pushes you up against the wall. And when God let that stuff spew out of him, and then God finally challenged him with all the things he could do and Job could do. Job, watch, the light turned on. And he turned. God was the one that was turning Job. Job wasn't turning himself. God impregnated him with great knowledge and supernatural power. And he turns around and said, I abhor myself. I spoke foolishly. I couldn't. And when he did that, watch this. God turned his captivity. If you want your captivity turned around, you need to get naked and open and honest with God about the big things in your life and the little things in your life. Because if you don't let him turn you, you're going to stay a captive. Am 
I doing good? I can't tell. I can't tell. <laughs> wow. He saw he was wrong and he repented and he confessed and he got instructed. I want to show you scripture. I'm going to, I'm going to shut this down now because this ain't going like I thought it would. It's not your fault. It's just me. My expectations are way different than yours. I, I just finished doing a camp meeting and camp meetings will ruin you. Camp meetings are filled with people who believe God and are responsive and reactionary. And when we come home, it's just not like that. So it's just me. I'm baptized with a camp meeting spirit. You just have to overlook me for just, I've been on the mountain. You've been living seven days in the valley. Ain't your fault. It's just the way it is. I just want to show you something. This is so powerful. Watch. He that hateth reproof shall die. Anybody in this house, me number one, that is not willing for God to reprove you, you might as well die because you ain't worth nothing. And I'm not worth nothing. If I will not accept divine reproof, there's no way I can experience divine turning. Whoa. Whoa. Watch this. <laughs> he that refuseth instruction despises his own soul. The pastor people that you can't instruct, that you can't help, that you can't challenge, that you can't give fresh direction to. say, well, I got the Holy Ghost. Well, so do I. But just because we have the Holy Ghost and we've been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that doesn't mean we've graduated school. It doesn't mean that we have no so much now that God has to ask us questions. I, 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 just, I just wonder how many people are sitting here this morning that literally deep in your soul you're saying, I need no instruction. I have no need for reproof. Do you know how dynamic and spiritual I am? You could have fooled God. He didn't think you were that way. And he's trying to give you some reproof and trying to give you some instruction. And you go, I don't need that stupid stuff. You know who I am? You say, well, you're being a very foolish person because if you refuse instruction, you're going to die. And if if you resist and refuse instruction and reproof, you hate your own soul. Because from now until the coming of the Lord, we have to keep having God talk to us and deal with us and show us things. See, our problem is our mindset in Pentecost. We think if we don't do the big sins, sexual immorality, uh, robbing a bank, uh, shooting your mother, uh, blowing up your neighbor's house. If you don't do big things, you're okay. Well, how about unconfessed sin? How about anger and rebellion just seething in us? I was praying early this morning for a bunch of our backslidden folks and people that left our church a long time ago and not too long ago. And I was praying for all of them. And I was naming all the names that I could remember. And I just said, Lord, please help this person. I know that they're, they're full of anger and they're full of toxic waste and they're bitter over this. And I don't know whether they're bitter at you or they're just bitter at me or bitter at the church, but they're destroying themselves, Lord. And, and I'm laying hold on this scriptural principle that says, look, this, your children are going to come back. The people that have, have got offended and upset if you'll just keep letting me turn you, I will eventually turn them. Because they cannot turn by themselves. Listen to me. The Bible says no man can come to the... You can't come to God except the Father draw them. You think you can repent or they can repent. No, they can't. The person that's walked away from the church and the kingdom for whatever reason, they cannot just one day say, I'm going back to church. If that happens, it's because God has put a thought in their heart. God has put an idea in their minds. So we need to pray even today. Lord, impregnate these precious people with thoughts about coming back home. 
about returning to the kingdom, about repenting, about receiving instruction, because nobody can come except the Spirit draws them. Even those precious people in the early apostolic church in Acts 11, they said, turn around when they got mad at Peter because Peter went and preached to Cornelius' house and the Holy Ghost fell and he baptized. They said, then, now we understand. They held their peace. The Lord has granted the Gentiles repentance unto life. You can't just repent. You think you can, but you can't. But God can turn you. God can turn your thinking. God can turn your attitude. God can turn you around. And that's a great beginning. Some of you wonderful people that I've had the pleasure or the privilege or whatever it is to try and pass to you for years, I've asked day in, day out that God would turn you. Not that you're not saved. It's just that the pregnant possibility of what you could be and do for the kingdom has never been realized, and you just need God to, to, to turn you. See, if you're not careful, you and I will live at a level of our skills and activities, and we perform that, and all the while, there's stuff hidden in us that says, no, God said, no, I want to get that. Why? Because if you think you're doing a good job now, if you let me turn you, You'll, you'll blow your own mind what you are capable of becoming in God if I can just turn you. The only reason some of you wonderful people don't have a hardly frequent the prayer room is because you need God to turn you. Because the truth ain't enough to turn you. And the screaming preacher, he ain't enough to turn you. And the good music, it ain't enough to turn you. And the wonderful saints of God that are here praising and worshiping God, they're not enough to turn you. So we got to do like the King Saul. Lord, I, the Spirit of the Lord shall come upon thee, and thou shalt be turned into another man. But it's not enough to be turned into another man. There's a lot of you wonderful people that have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but you have never got to the place of receiving instruction. And if you don't feed what originally turned you, it goes away. It happened to Saul. Watch this. I'm going to go a little further. If you ever receive a divine experience from God and the supernatural of God, and that's what that was for Saul and it was for all the apostles and it was for us, that's a supernatural turning. If you don't feed it and you don't stay connected to it, watch what happens. You'll start dealing with witches. You'll start reaching to the wrong side of the spirit world because the spirit world has created a capacity in you that's way beyond this world. And if you and I don't stay connected to the spirit of God, we'll move towards the spirit of this world. We'll move towards death. Now you say, oh, I would never go to devils and demons. Who do you think's behind all your TV stuff? Who do you think's behind all the porno stuff? Who do you think's behind all the political stuff? Who do you think's behind all this ungodly stuff? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. There are spirits behind all this stuff. It's not just politicians. There are spirits that are working. And if there ever was a time that we Pentecostals need to get rejoined and realigned and reconnected to the power that first saved us, it's now. Okay, you, you can stand with me. I, I realize now I cannot take you any further. I realize that. I can't take you any further. There's a great resistance here. I am so sorry. Uh, you just stay with your resistance and roll your dice and see if you make it. That's fine. I'm calling to the men that are in this building that you know that somewhere in your life, even your wife may not even know it, but somewhere in your life there's something right now that you need God himself personally supernaturally, sovereignly, to turn you. If you are willing to say, Lord, I'm willing now to take your yoke in a greater measure, in a greater way in my life, would you please turn me and I will be turned? If you're willing to do that, would you leave where you are and come to the altar? Would you? Look at this. Look at these wonderful men. God bless these precious men. Thank you, Jesus. I want God to turn me. I want God. I'm not, I didn't beat up on anybody, did I? 
I didn't. Jeremiah wrote the book of Jeremiah, but he also wrote the book of Lamentations. And when you go to the book of Lamentations, in the last chapter, here's what he says. O oh Lord God, turn us unto thyself, watch, and we shall be turned and restore us and bring us back to what we once had. Now look at here. Look at this. This is so powerful right now, you wonderful men. Now I'm not, I hope I'm not assaulting you sweet ladies because you ladies are usually the ones that always respond to the altar call, okay? But I wanted these men. Look at these men. Well, that doesn't look like a man to me. That is, that is yeah, I guess you, okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, come on. The only way you're going to be the kind of husband that you really want to be and the father you need to be, you need to ask God, Lord, I'm willing to bear the yoke now. I, I don't know how to bear it. I'm willing to change, but I can't find the power and the, and the giftedness of God to change. So, Lord, I want you to turn me and turn and overturn my weakness and empower me that I can become who and what you want. Would you, would you, would you begin to pray, brethren, and, and, and all you folks that are here, would you just ask God in your own way, in your own way, Lord, I, I need victory over this anger, and I need victory over my lust to have money or to trinkets or toys or power or prestige or whatever it is. Hallelujah. 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 Ha. Hallelujah. 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 When anybody becomes penitent, they become pleasant to God. And if you would find a place where you can ask God, to help you and he said after I was turned I repented and after I repented I was be I was willing to be instructed and after I was instructed I slapped myself on the thigh and said oh man what a mess I made out of my life and how did I ever end up in the condition that I'm in now and God said, it doesn't matter what you've done and what you've become. If you repent and you open yourself and you want me to turn you, I am fixing to turn you. And when you get turned, you will be turned. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep praying. Now, you sweet ladies, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, there ain't much room up here. But if you'd like to pile in behind these men or in the aisles, I, I, I think... I think we need to have a prayer meeting here for just a minute. Hallelujah. He turned around and said Gomer had walked out and became an immoral lady. She gave birth to another man's children. She left her husband. The Bible said, I'm going to hedge up her way. And I'm going to make sure she doesn't reach her lovers. And that I'm going to put a thought in her mind. And she's going to say, I'm going back to my husband. What? Where did she get that thought from? God was supernaturally and sovereignly turning her because she didn't have the power to turn herself, even though she probably hated herself for what she had done. Is there anybody in this place besides me that has you ever really felt like you hated yourself or you were disgusted with yourself, that you ever allowed yourself to do something? Okay. Come on now, I'm finished. It's your chance. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and pray. I'm not listening. You ain't talking to me. I'm not listening. You pray. You pray. Lord, Lord, I'm willing to bear the yoke now, Lord. I'm willing to bear the yoke now, Lord. I wasn't willing before. I was fighting against you, but I'm willing now, Lord. And then he turns around and he said, Look, I can't turn myself. So, Lord, I'm turning this over to you, and I'm putting this great work in your hands, and I'm saying, you turn me, and I'll be turned. And once I'm turned, you show me what you want me to change, and what you want me to alter, and what you want me to do, and I'll do it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I need you to break through. Tear down the wall. Let everything on, turn me. fall, turn me. cause I turn wanna me. praise and I you. Shall be turn me. Turn me. There's nothing between turn me. you and me. Come on, put me. your hand on me, Lord, and I need turn you me. to break through. Come on, Lord, I 
tried to check these Tell desires and I haven't been able to do it. Come on, Lord. Turn. 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 I want to praise pray you. Pray for you to listen today. And, I, and I'm saying, I'm not saying anything wrong with you. I guess you just walked in front of me and I prayed for you. I said, Lord, turn to the Turn to listen. I'm not saying you're lost. I'm just saying, turn. Turn. Everybody in the house. Needs God to supernaturally turn us. Because sometimes we want to turn and we lack the ability to turn. You and me, I need you to break through. Oh God, pray, pray, pray. to pray right now. I want to turn, but I can't turn. I'm not resisting you. I'm not fighting against you. I just somehow lack the ability. I lack the power. I lack whatever it is to turn. So you turn me, Lord. Turn me, turn me, turn me. I can't do it, but you can do it. You can do it. You got to believe this morning, brethren, sisters. God wants to turn us. He's not fighting. He's not trying to override human will. He'll only turn people who are willing to be turned. You got to submit to being turned. Would you break through the pride? Break through the shame. the pools of water. Surely what you can do with rivers and oceans and seas, you can do with a man or a woman. Open the gates. I'm getting tired of playing this same. While they're singing, is there anybody in the house, you men especially, that you honestly throw a hand out and say, I want God to turn me. I want God to turn me. I want God to praise you. You're lost doesn't mean you're ungodly, it just means there's issues in your life. You need God to turn you. The power of God came back and worked in his life. refuse a prayer like that. And after that, I repented. And after that, I 
was instructed. Let down the walls, let everything What does he mean by that? But that is that kind of praying. I'm willing to take the yoke. I'm willing to change. And I can ask, I'm not able. You turn me. And after that, he turned me. Folks, God's desire was to save Israel, to save Ephraim, to return, restore their children. God's desire is for everybody in this house to be forgiven, to be filled with the Holy Ghost, to live for Him, to experience recovery and restoration. That's God's desire. He said, after you turn, I will have mercy upon the nation. people right now would you I shout out loud four or five or six times turn me Lord break through the fear turn me Lord open the gates turn me Lord I'm getting tired you don't turn me I ain't going to be turned turn me Lord the pride. break through the shame I've had enough oh, staying the same break oh, through the fear open the gates King Saul, he wasn't looking for it. He was just prophesied it would happen. But Jeremiah went looking for it. I need you to turn me. We need to leave this house this morning with that attitude and that outlook and that prayer. Lord, turn me. I want to turn. I know what's right. I want to do what's right. I don't want to do what's wrong. But sometimes I just don't have the power. I don't have the ability. I want to. I will to. That's what Paul said. When I would do good, evil's present. The thing which I hate, I do. The thing which I love, I fail to do. Why? Because I want to, but how to perform, I don't know. So what did he say? Oh, wretched man, <laughs> who shall deliver me from this? He said, I thank God. God Almighty through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how you get delivered. That's how you get delivered. Well, I've preached a long time. I'm so sorry to have kept you so long. You see anybody that's sleeping, just wake them up, tell them it's time to leave. Amen. Love you guys. Thank you for listening. I hope I, I, I really do. I hope I helped you by making you feel uncomfortable. God doesn't turn us, folks. We ain't turning us. I spent 40 some odd years living this way, and I've sought God to do this and do that and do this and do that. Take this lust from me, take this anger from me, take this feeling from me, take this practice from me. And God says, I ain't gonna do that. He said, You're responsible to take care of that. Well, I can't. Well, I would help you, but you never have asked me to turn you. You've only asked me to do it. Why don't you ask me? Turn me, Lord, and I shall be turned. God bless. Shake hands. Be friendly. Go with God. Have a powerful missionary tonight, Brother Robinette. He can pray everybody through the Holy Ghost except a fence post. So you might want to be here tonight. He'll, he'll be our guest. Amen. Yeah, boy, I see someone needs turning. God.
Lord, everybody. If you are a van rider or a van driver, if you ride the vans or you drive the vans, we would like to have a meeting in the 120 room right now. Quick meeting. Thank you.